Hey guys, my name is Ronella Hernandez and today Web3 TV is at the STEP conference in Dubai where there's all things from food tech to fintech to sports tech to everything tech. And I'm sitting here with Nubi, who was one of the speakers today on the digital stage. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What do you think so far of this event? It's been great. I mean, we walked in this one and it was a bit gloomy. Hold your mic up. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit gloomy, but now we have sun is out. Um, people are networking. Great content so far. I was at the um, fintech stage for the, um, for the last two sessions and it's been quite, quite insightful as well. Yeah, beautiful day. Lots of people here. Lots going on. So tell me more about you. I know that you lead the startups programs at Paystack, which is a Stripe company. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys are focusing on at the moment. Yeah, so yeah, my job, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, but my <laughs> job involves waking up every day and just talking to founders and innovators and operators as to how to launch and scale their ventures um, across the markets that we're in right now, which is Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, Rwanda, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, and so it's really about thinking about, again, like, you know, how do you grow? How do you scale? How do you leverage technology? Uh, it, like imagine tech, like fin um, blockchain and, and crypto and AI um, to build and, and scale your venture. So that, yeah, that, that's, that's, what, that's what I do. What are some of the challenges there when it comes to supporting startups? And also what's the most rewarding part about it? Yeah, I, I think no two startups are ever the same. Um, even if you are building for the same space, the same market, the same customers like there's so many dynamics that take that goes into a startup from founding teams to strategy to backgrounds to even value systems um, and so being able to just again cut through all of those factors to go down exactly building products that the market wants and pays you for it uh, i think that's quite challenging um i think it's just rewarding when it actually works um <laughs> i mean the, yeah a lot of data is thrown around oh 90 percent of startups die after one year some say 80 uh, but those that survive, I think it's rewarding to actually see them actually succeed because it just shows that it's possible. Uh, the upsides are enormous. And so, and also the impact that they have in marketing customers, in lives of even employees and all, like it's, it's quite rewarding to see all of that hap um, come, to, come together. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. I love the passion that you speak with. <laughs> yeah. All right. Luckiest, so <laughs> like, luckiest guy in the world, I said it. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about the Paystack ecosystem. You said that you serve seven countries in Africa, but what exactly are you doing for the African populations? Yeah, so at, at the heart of it, it's about like moving many. Um, I mean, the founding fathers of the internet um, thought about a world where you can move things on the internet easily. And for a long time, we thought that was going to be just data, just again, pictures and text and videos. Uh, but money is also a big part of that. How do I move money from person A to person B? Um, entity A to entity B, and that could be within country, that could be cross-border, that could be to anywhere in the world. And so our work at Paystack fundamentally is how do you help businesses accept payments or even make payments um, as easily as possible so that that doesn't become part of their work. They're, they've set out to build a venture, whether it's about, whether it's an e-commerce platform or it's a marketplace, payments should not be another hard thing for them to actually figure out. I mean, business is hard as it is. And so I work actually to, again, abstract all those complexities. I just make it that you can actually turn on payment with simple APIs, low-code tools, or third-party platforms um, to just, again, make payments move as, as easily as possible, as easy as sending an email or a WhatsApp message. Moving money. I love it. I just wish it were there were less fees <laughs> well we still didn't we, i mean we're building the, a new world we're building a new world in the old world and so we have to like pay, pay our dues to those who have invested in the infrastructures and also it's trust me the off, all of those fees are not coming to us we are splitting it like razor tin margins across multiple stakeholders okay okay that's good and so i mean blockchain and cryptocurrency is a solution for that right moving money around the world cross borders so I know in African countries, there's a lot, a big user base of crypto. Can you maybe speak to what are the main use cases? Yeah, so it's a, it's a few things. Um, so I think one way I put it is that while a lot of people might see crypto crypto as a store of value, I'm going to put in money and I need to appreciate. I think for in Africa, it's, it's a big utility. Like without it, people can't even move money um, or it's more expensive or they don't even have access. Uh, and so I think... The use cases that we've seen out of the continent is again P2P, um, P2P exchanges. So I have dollars, you have this. Let's let's swap. Uh, and so doing that through cryptocurrency is is one way. I think also just even access. Some people are not banked, do, don't have a bank account, and so they can't go through the traditional route of actually again 
wrapping up their money into the system and then converting it. And so again, using crypto as a as a way to do that is quite important. And also, like I said, fees, like it's expensive to move money. Like it's it's quite expensive. I mean, we have people in countries in Africa where you have like trucks moving physical cash um within within the economy. And so a cheaper alternative because that cost has to be transferred to users is actually to explore blockchain and, and cryptocurrency. And so we see that as we to actually like again preserve the value. Uh, and I'll tell the last one exactly around around FX. So we see the dollar to local currency is actually de depreciating on a daily, if not hourly basis. And so how do I preserve the value of the money I've made exactly to convert that to a more stable um, form, which again, cryptocurrency helps to do that. Yeah. Are you personally a crypto investor at all? So uh, I think the way I put it, like, I don't want my kids to grow up and tell me, daddy, why didn't you buy Bitcoin? And so the way we tell our parents, why didn't they buy Google stocks? And so... Uh, for me, yes, I, I do um, have a share of uh, investment in, into cryptocurrency. Um, it's more of the first category of like store of value for the future uh, as opposed to utility, because again, I will be one of the privileged to has access to, to a bank account or other things like that. Uh, but at the same time, I find myself maybe around when it comes to actually moving money cross border. Uh, leveraging re leveraging cryptocurrency there as, as opposed to just investing there. Yeah. All right. So you heard it. Buy Bitcoin for your kids, folks. <laughs> <laughs> just like Nubi. All right. And I know Stripe, so Paystack is a Stripe company and Stripe is a fiat off and on ramp solution. So is there anything you can say about like maybe plans that Stripe has to incorporate more uh, blockchain tech? Yeah, I, I think I think we're, we're, we're not deleted as to like um, it's uh, it's a matter of like when and not if. And so Stripe has always pushed on itself um, to be a custody and view of, of that future where cryptocurrency becomes utility and, and is really like, again, mainstream. Uh, and so, like you mentioned, uh, a number of efforts first went into, like, again, that, that if you want to call it, interface between Web 2 and Web 3. And so, can we be the on-ramp and the off-ramp where, again, it's it's a, it's a as easy as a, a few lines of code to actually start accepting cryptocurrency and also, again, uh, converting between cryptocurrency and fiat. So, I think that's the first wave. I think the next wave is exactly just, again, pure utility of it. And so, it's not about, like, converting, but just, again, spending and moving and and settling uh, this this in, in that form, um, which again would, again, take based on, again, adoption, uh, if you will, in the market. So I think we're very much, we're watching closely and we're just, again, very uh, very much um, engaging with innovators who are pushing the boundaries, uh, your startups and uh, your, uh, your entrepreneurs, to just be there to build the infrastructure that we need and what that happens. Definitely, all right. Yeah. And what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you or to you learn more about Paystack? Yeah, so Paystack is, uh, again, we're online, paystack.com. Um, for me and my team, I did the startup programs team, so you can always reach out to other startups at paystack.com or paystack.com forward slash startups. We're always keen to, again, work with anybody in the future. And so, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be here for the rest of the day, checking out the booths, checking out the innovators here and see who we can actually work with. But yeah, we're looking forward to engaging with as many people as possible. Okay, amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Nubi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's been great. And everyone, please stay tuned for more coverage coming out today from the STEP conference.